With many students returning to class virtually, what's the future for music education? We're going to talk about that today, so stick around. Hey, welcome to Charlie's Open Mic. My name is Charlie Mossbrook. On today's program, we're going to talk to Kevin Richards. He is the founder of Roots of American Music. We're going to talk about the creative ways that that organization is providing music education to kids all around our area. Uh, we're also going to talk to him about his own music. We're going to listen to a little music, and why don't we do that right now? Here's Kevin. Robin ain't here no more. His 88s ring true and clear Like waves that crash the shore A smile that sings like Christmas Day Robin ain't here no more The jasper sparkles in his smile Montgomery is above His midnight hour, it has come the angels are singing now And Martin Waiting He also extends his hand Leroy and Scrapper Want you to lead the band A lion's eye A possum squall Inside so deep a sound he lit our worlds with his bluesy scrub, an answer that can't be found. Angels, they welcome Robin to join the fest. Whiner, he's jamming the blues his request Them 88's They're silent now There'll be no more Encore I thought I heard The Washington Lee But Robin ain't here No more Welcome to the show, Kevin. Hey, Charlie. Welcome. Good to see you. Thanks for inviting me to be on this. Full disclosure, before we get too far into this, I got to let you know I've been doing work with Roots of American Music, both performing with them when they have events and uh, teaching a little bit. Uh, so let's get started. As a performer, I've met you probably 30 some years ago at, at uh, probably the Barking Spider. Tell us a little bit about your history with the uh, spider. Well, the Barking Spider Tavern, I think my first experience there was 1988, and I went down to check it out, and the first thing I noticed is they had a jukebox that had Fats Domino tunes and Chuck Berry and, and uh, Cannonball Adderley and Nat King Cole and uh, I, Bill Monroe, Elvis Presley. I was thrilled to find a place that had an actual old jukebox and a cold beer. Uh, one thing led to another. I got to be friends with Martin Jardim, and uh, he asked me if I'd play some live music on a, uh, I think the first time was on a Wednesday. It was probably the fall of 1988. Think about that, 1988. I think that's the year. I'm sure Jenna's watching. She's going to tell me. She'll correct me if I, if I missed it by a year. But I started with that, and uh, then he asked me to come back the next month, and then he moved it to a Thursday. Uh, we went to a Cleveland Indians baseball game. Martin was a huge baseball nut. Mm -hmm. And he just said to me, hey, why don't you just start playing on Thursdays the rest of the year, just the first Thursday. And uh, so back then, the original string band, we call it the first string band, was mm -hmm. Bill Westock and I. And then John Saunders joined us. Uh, and eventually Dave Huddleston joined the band. So that was the quartet. We held that spot for a long time. It was a place that allowed us to express art, play the music that you really loved, the, song, the music that you wrote and a great place to collaborate and meet people. And then from that, you developed a group called the Spider Stompers, uh, which was made up of a bunch of the players in there. You want to tell us about that group? 
Sure. So, uh, you know, the first incarnation on the Thursdays was the first string band. I mentioned Dave Huddleston, and mm-hmm. Bill Lustock, and then, oh, I don't know, seven, eight years later, but uh, we disbanded and I started playing with Jack D. Lissandro. Jack's mm-hmm. out of Canta. It didn't take too long to figure out we needed Ray DeForest on the band stand with us and Ray's a master acoustic bass musician. And, and uh, so that trio held the spot for quite a while. Uh, Rock and Robin would come down. He was the unofficial uh, fifth member, and I should mention Sheila Dow's Sugar Pie. She she joined us for little, maybe the last three four years. So, uh, but but our good buddy Rock and Robin was a, a regular, uh, unofficial Spider Stomper member. We named it actually after the 1891 Cleveland Spiders. Mm-hmm. We at the old uh, Lexington baseball field and the parking spider tavern. And Robin, of course, Rock and Robin, you, you mentioned, he passed away a few weeks ago. You he were... was wonderful. And I uh, still remember the first time I met him and the first gig, I, uh, I sat next to him on stage and stood right in front of the piano and he, he played the Washington Lee. I think he called it the Washington Lee Swing. And uh, he played that tune and he pounds the piano so hard it just <laughs> kind of knocks, <laughs> knocks you backwards because the volume's so loud. And, uh, that's, that's Robin. Uh, good friend. And we miss him dearly. Speaking of Washington Lee, uh, in, in, in my community, in Cleveland Heights, in your community, uh, there's a corner called Washington and Lee, and that's where Heights High School sits. And the other corner of Lee Road was Lee and Cedar, and there was a music store there that you got your start. Well, you're talking about Dick Lurie or Dick Lurie uh-huh. Guitar Studios. And, yeah. uh, when I was a kid, my mother bought me a, a, a guitar from Dick Lurie for, for Christmas, and that was my start and my interest. And, uh, directly across the street from me was a gentleman named Mark Ostrowski who played in a band called The Missing Links. And Mark was, uh, you know, five, six, seven years older than me. And I would go across the street and go to band rehearsals and just sit there and listen and watch them bang out guitars. And um, he always told me, go to Dick Lurie, go to Dick Lurie. So I just started going up there and hanging out. And when I was 21 years old, Mr. Lurie offered me a job. And uh, I was a salesman for oh, a year. Mm-hmm. But, uh, that was a really good start. And he always referred to me as Mr. Richards. Mr. Richards. And I would call him Mr. Lurie. I've worked at the Ohio Arts Council for close to 20 years, and usually every year I go to Columbus, and I spend some time face-to-face with them, and we talk about these various programs, and they help us with sustainability dollars, and they help fund our podcast series, and these arts partnership programs, uh, working with seniors, and they've been just great. And a big surprise to me when I was, last time I was there, as I was walking out the door, they said, there's one more thing we want to talk to you about. I said, what's up? They said, we'd like for you to, to be part of the uh, Mastery Artist Traditional Arts Apprentice Program. And I said, what? So they explained it to me. And then I thought about that and said, wow. And uh, so I reached out to you, Charlie, and um, well, I'm happy to report. And uh, it's been a success. And uh, just September 4th was last Friday. We officially got the, the verbiage. but um, I guess it's, uh, how do I say this? Uh, Last Friday, I was recognized as a master artist in the country blues, in the Piedmont country blues style, to play Mm -hmm. fashion country blues styles like Mississippi John Hurt and Reverend Gary Davis. But the second component is it's a traditional artist apprentice program. And so I needed a partner. So I thought you'd be a great candidate. And they loved your background with Folknet and all the great things that you do. great songwriting stuff and these type of programs so they said it's a done deal so uh it's official (laughs) that's great i'm here for the next eight or nine months i'm super excited to be a part of it and uh i'm gonna wrap the show up with uh my rendition of freight train and hopefully it's gonna grow once we're we're done with uh with the program and and my my style of playing will uh, be a little more traditionally based rather than me guessing my way through through the piedmont blues uh, yes, pretty good, Charlie. Thanks. <laughs> but let's let's uh, let's take a break and listen to you play a little Piedmont blues. This is it's called the Creole Bells. Okay. I chose this tune because everyone affiliates this tune with Mississippi John Hurt, and which is he does a fantastic job of it, and he just plays like one section of it. Um, the version I play is the old piano rag from 1901. The real name is my Creole Bell, one step. <laughs> Thank you. 
we opened up this little spot. Uh, today, people know the bread shop, it's called On the Rise. They've been there about 15 years. People stop by for the bakery, but directly above uh, is the Fairmount School of Music. And, and we started with uh, just a couple teachers and we slowly grew and, uh, you know, people like Deborah Van Cleef came on board and she started teaching some guitars and ukes and uh, just a various different group of people came mm -hmm. and went with, uh, you know, we probably have 12 teachers or so. Uh, my wife, Pat, her, she's been the, the heart and soul of this for about six, seven years and she pretty much does everything there. I think I, I think I go to the bank and make the bank deposits and reconcile the bank account. And, but we just have recently had a transition, mm -hmm. a big transition, uh, uh, effective uh, September 1st, we publicly announced that Musicology, uh, the new business is called Musicology Cleveland Heights. And there's a, a strong music school that came out of the Columbus Way, uh, run by a, a husband and wife team of Joseph and Kay Barker, young educators, young touring musicians in their mid thirties. Uh, six years ago, they started their first uh, little music school in Columbus with a, with a hope to bring great education and lessons to kids, but also provide income and a, and a real nice situation for music teachers. And we're really happy to be part of that. And when I first launched the Fairmount School of Music, I was excited and happy and thought I was, you know, really making some progress and really reaching a lot of people. But, you know, after a decade of that, I just began to felt like I, you know, I was re essentially reaching 50 year old white wealthy males mm -hmm. who wanted to play blues guitar. And, and we were leaving out a whole lot of other people and I just began to think about a model that could, uh, that we didn't have to worry about geography. Mm -hmm. because, you know, if you have a music school, people come to you. And I thought about, could we have an outreach program? And could we have a program, you know, that serves all levels, all races, all, all you know, economics don't affect this. And, uh, and then I thought maybe a program that doesn't necessarily have to have a music uh, instrument in, in hand. And, uh, so I just thought up with this idea to present, preserve, educate through traditional American music. This idea came to fruition in uh, 1999. And so for 20, I was the founder and executive director for 21 years. And this past summer, I'm happy to announce that I have uh, transitioned, uh, resigned as executive director, still the founder, but I'm, mm -hmm. I am no longer the executive director. Jason Myers has come on board and he's filling that role and we're excited. And, uh, you know, I function as the, the artistic director. Now. Instead of wearing two hats, I get to wear one. And Jason and I split these duties up. And I think between the two of us, we'll do a better job. We had Jason on a couple months ago, and we talked about the Stop the Hate program, which you're about to get started. Uh, being in the middle of a pandemic, that's, it's taking a new, uh, a new path. You want to tell us how that, that's going to work out? We're in our 12th year. I can't believe it. Uh, seems like yesterday that I began conversations with the Maltz Museum of Jewish Heritage and to talk about, hey, you've got this, you've got this composition type of program. Kids are writing essays about stopping hatred, tolerance, anti-bullying. I just thought that was great. What a great message that was. Mm -hmm. I thought, could we take that message that came from the Maltz Museum and just spread it across the community? Uh, but using music, because, you know, as a kid, I, I had a tough time. I still do. I have a tough time, like, reading books and stuff, because my attention span is kind of so-so. You know, but I can, uh, I, you know, I can play music or do mathematics or, you know, be involved in science activities, you know, for 10 hours straight. And I just said, could we do this, we'll do the same idea, deliver the same message, and let's just have a musical component. Um, Last year, we reached 1,100 students, 45 classes at 15 schools. That was year 11. Uh, students got to go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They got to perform their songs, their own songs that they wrote, that they recorded. There's contests. Uh, some of these schools win uh, $5,000. Uh, the essay portion of it, students win. I'm not, I'm not making this number up. $40,000. Four zero comma. Zero, zero, zero. You know, it's, it's, it's an amazing program and what they've done. Um, I've been pushing for years to expand the program because we were only in Lorraine and Cuyahoga County. Now today with, with COVID-19 um, and everything focused on, on virtual platforms, 
uh, we decided this, this in June that we're going to focus on 12 counties, all virtual. They, they actually want us to triple the size of the program this year, and they said three times as big as we were last year. Um, we're going to try. <laughs> we're going to shoot for the stars. And the great thing, too, is we have a partner that's going to join us, uh, Lake Erie, Inc., which is mm-hmm. a, a wonderful organization. You know, they, they help kids with their essays and their writing. So they're going to partner with us. So schools and are going to have, have a music component and a composition writing component. Teaching artists, musicians are going to help write songs, working with the students, writing the students' lyrics, helping them, and then composing them, and creating some uh, music files and uh, We'll probably work with our good friend Brian Straw to do the face-to-face recordings. Uh, they'll be posted on a website or a digital portal or something, and the Rock Hall will be involved again, and they'll, they'll have a whole bunch of judges that'll judge this content. And uh, so we're looking at a new version of it, uh, but I'm excited because we're, we're going to grow. If you appreciate this content, please consider subscribing. Please hit that link below. Please ring the bell for notifications. Please click like and comment down below. Let us know what you're up to and what you're thinking. And as always, you can visit us at charliesopenmic.com and find our Patreon link where you can help support the show. Tell them which rail that I'm on They won't know which way that I am bound And when I'm gone and I'm in my grave And no more good times I will crave And lay that stone by my head and my feet And please tell them I've gone to sleep And freight train, freight train, it's rolling so fast Freight train, freight train, it's rolling so fast And please don't tell them which rail that I'm on They won't know which way that I am bound can hear that old number nine as it comes rolling on down the line. And freight train, freight train, it's rolling so fast. And freight train, freight train, it's rolling so fast. Well, please don't tell them which rail that I'm on. Thank you for watching Charlie's Open Mic this week, and thank you to Kevin Richards for sitting down and talking to us about everything he's working on. As always, please click that subscription link down below. Please ring the bell for notifications of upcoming episodes. You can always click like and comment down below. Let us know what you're up to. Let us know what you want to see on the show in the future. Also, please uh, visit us at charliesopenmic.com where you can find a link to our Patreon page and help support the show. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>